Welcome to the Central Florida Gardening Show. Right, welcome back to the Central Florida Gardening Show. Today we are transplanting a Moringa olifera into the front yard from a planter in the backyard. So, in a minute, we will get the uh, Moringa and the planter in the backyard and bring it to the front. And then we'll, we'll show how we uh, we're transplanting this tree. It's going to be kind of tricky because it's kind of tall and Moringas get kind of tall and lanky very quickly. So, we'll, we'll show you in a minute. So, before we uh, transplant the Moringa into the ground, we're going to fill some of the hole. Tiva, go ahead and come over here and show them how deep the hole is. So we're, we're trying to fill some of this hole with coconut fiber. And this is, um, you can get this at a lot of places, but uh, I got this on hanging moss from these, these great guys in urban sunshine on hanging moss. And um, this Cocoa Tech, you get almost 11 pounds of it. And you can continue to cut and use this coconut fiber in all your substrates for your soils. What it really does is it keeps the moisture at the root zone. And so here in Florida, because of this, this sand, I mean everything here is like a beach. Uh, you need some way to retain the water so it goes into the root zone and it stays there so you don't have to water constantly. It's particularly important during the summer months. So we're going to put this coconut fiber in first. Before now that is going to provide, and I'll mix some of this with some of the some of the sand. But this is going to provide a nice a nice place for the root ball for the moringa to uh, get that establish a nice root zone that retains water, and that way, if it retains water, I can also retain the nutrients. Because you can use all kinds of natural fertilizers like seabird guano, bat guanos. Uh, I find seabird guano to be the best. It's really high in nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium, really. It's time to go and get the Moringa for transplant. Everything on it is edible. We have two over here too. The same plant. All the stuff is edible. Let's try one. Mmm, good too. Tiva in this. Okay, so we have the Marincha in the hole, and this is a bunch of stuff from my uh, uh, our compost barrel. And um, so, keeping a compost barrel, you can keep a lot of stuff kind of rotting and all this great organic matter. 
perfect for these kinds of transplants. So put that on. Now we're going to mix it with regular, uh, regular soil and dirt. Let me get the shovel. Go ahead and stop it. I have to get the shovel. And we have a little extra mulch we're going to put on some cypress mulch. And then I'm going to mix some regular, some regular dirt. Just Florida sand, that is. We well, just want to make sure you have lots of, lots and lots of organic matter. All right, Julia, look at the camera. We come here. We have successfully transplanted our Marincha olifera. The Marinja olifera tree or olifera tree uh, is sometimes called the, the drum stick tree. Uh, the reason being is if you look at the young seed pods, I'll show you a photograph. They're kind of like this, like little drumsticks. They look kind of like okra, and uh, they're cooked that way in uh, many countries and in Africa. Here's an, an Asian dish using the Marinja drumsticks. Vitamin A, calcium, potassium, proteins. Vitamin a lot of research that's being done into things like the seeds. Um, the seeds can be used to actually purify water. Um, the roots can be eaten sort of like horseradish. Almost, it's sometimes called the miracle tree because almost every piece of the Marinja tree is edible. Um, there's some great places that are on the web to learn more about Marinja as well as to purchase Marinja seeds and products like Marinja leaf powder. Uh, one of these is ilovemarinja.com. Great site, uh, uh, affordable prices on the seeds and the powders, and they also harvest and sell pods. And so check out I Love Marinja. These guys are actually not too far from uh, Zone 9 here in Orlando. Uh, and Zone 9 and Zone 10, Marinja love these growing zones. They actually like the sandy, uh, subtropical. They'll also grow in almost desert conditions. It's a very adaptable plant. It's, it's you know, if, uh, they don't even like rich soil. They, they like, you know, poor soils. So, so check out ilovemarinja.com, though. They have some great products, and you can explore some of the things that they have on their site. Neat thing also about I Love Marinja is they're not too far from Orlando, down in Bradenton, um, south of Tampa. Also, another great one is Marinja Farms, and they are they're out of California. Let's see, I think it was yeah, it was sure it was uh, yeah Sherman Oaks, California, and this is a nice site, and they have some great products. They also sell live trees. So you might be able to get some live trees if you want to grow your own Marinja from Marinja Farms at MarinjaFarms.com. So I want to end with showing you some of these great photos of Marinja being used as a food source in Niger, where there is a, a lot of um, uh, problems, of course, with food cultivation because of the harshness of the of the environment here. So um, this these Marinjas here in this pot are being prepared with um, with onions and with chilies, and you can prepare them anyway. I prefer just to eat them raw. They're a little bit bitter raw, um, but you don't want to cook something over 140 degrees for a long time because you begin to ruin the nutritional value. There's a lady harvesting some marincha. You can see uh, you can actually grow uh, marincha in conditions like this. And um, uh, when you're talking about 18 million people, you know, um, facing, you know, starvation and droughts and Marincha could be a, a, a miracle tree that could help our entire um, planet with, with, you know, to curb hunger. It's a great photograph here. There's a nice close-up of... Uh, of a lady holding uh, some of the uh, Marinja leaves. 
you can see some of the uh, a little harvesting some stuff here and uh, growing moringa out here and you can see the conditions that they're growing the moringa in are very harsh. He's just explaining some stuff about the moringa tree. Getting ready for some to go give the tree some water. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about moringa and um, maybe possibly some places to get some if you'd like to try growing these. Thanks for stopping.